So this is the background for today's scripture. In the Gospel of Matthew, we've been hearing the stories that show God's power manifest in Jesus. So Jesus fed the crowd of 5,000 with a few loaves and of bread and fish as a sign of God's abundance. Then after leaving the huge crowds to go away to pray by himself, he reminds us that his power comes from God. Then he walks on water to meet his disciples in a boat on the Sea of Galilee, and we get a story about faith and doubt. When Jesus landed, more crowds gathered, bringing all their sick, begging to touch him, even the hem of his cloak, and we get a story of healing power. Just after this demanding work, the Pharisees and the scribes, who were the Jewish traditionalists and lawyers, came to Jesus from Jerusalem. They came to give him grief about his disciples' unwashed hands and failure to properly follow the traditions. You can imagine that he was a little testy with them as he called them hypocrites and quoted the prophet Isaiah. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. This is the context for today's passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 to 20. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered them, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth and out of the heart that defiles. Defile. That is not a term we are accustomed to using. What does it mean to defile? One online dictionary offers these definitions and synonyms. To defile is to sully, mar, pollute, impair, debase, spoil, desecrate, tarnish, taint, ruin, profane, destroy. It is a verb. A massive coal ash spill defiles the river. It can have to do with people or things. Several women and children have come forward to say they were defiled by the minister. The air was defiled with the taint of burning oil. You can defile, you can be defiled. Why did Jesus use this word defile and what does it mean for us? The purity laws help define the Jewish race as a separate people in their time and ours. It gave them traditions and rituals that they could take with them wherever they went when they were scattered and their land was gone. It was a way to remember who they were. 
there were three categories of laws that defined what was holy, what was clean, and what was unclean. The laws were applied to people, to animals, to food, to spaces, to relationships. It seems archaic to us, but purity laws helped the community judge what was acceptable and unacceptable for them, who was in and who was out. There were consequences if a person was deemed unclean. They could be put out of the community permanently or separated for a time, like at that time during menstruation or childbirth. Usually, some action was needed to rectify the impurity, and one had to be declared ritually pure to be allowed back into the community. The Pharisees and scribes denounced Jesus and the disciples because they didn't observe the outward signs of purity. They didn't wash ritually, but more importantly, they hung out with and ate with people considered unclean by the Jewish community, people whose touch and very presence defiled them. But Jesus had no tolerance for that. He disdained their focus on the appearance of things rather than the reality. He demonstrated again and again that anything that cuts people off from the community of love and grace is not of God. So what does Jesus mean when he says it's what comes out of the heart that defiles? In ancient times, the heart was considered the seat of emotion and consciousness, awareness, selfhood. Proverbs 23.4 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Whatever is in your heart gets expressed in your life. This is what concerns Jesus. How is your heart? If it is defiled, your life will express that and be defiled. Now, off the top of his head, in this group of people, the crowd and the disciples, he names seven things, seven heart matters that defile. Evil intentions. It is impossible to plan intentionally to hurt someone by word or by deed without having the heart defiled. Murder. From the beginning, humans have had the capacity to kill, not just in self-defense, but anger, revenge, jealousy, even just to get something we want. Murder defiles the heart. Adultery. Unfaithfulness in marriage doesn't happen without the heart pulling away from your spouse first. It begins in the heart and defiles. Fornication. The decision to use someone else for pleasure alone, without relationship or care for them, defiles. Theft of things, ideas, or identities, or getting ahead at another person's expense, defiles. False witness, to falsely blame someone else or not speak up on their behalf when you can, is the opposite of loving your neighbor as yourself. It destroys trust and community and defiles. Slander, to speak in a way that tears other people down, defiles. These are some things that defile, but as I look at the list, I feel pretty good. I, I haven't murdered anyone. I don't cheat on my husband. And I don't start out with evil intentions. So am I in the clear? Maybe on some things. But I don't think this is all that Jesus meant. I think I have some work to do to make it personal for me. I think it's an invitation for us to look at the inside as well as the outside of our lives. The things that defile us may be more subtle, but for all that, no less real. You may have the appearance of affluence and success, yet be consumed by fear. No thing you acquire is ever enough, and for all 
all your stuff, you have no true security. Grasping fear defiles. Maybe you've been married for years and always faithful to your spouse, but you can't shake an addiction to porn. Virtual infidelity defiles. Maybe you have tons of friends on Facebook and Instagram and spend hours connecting and yet let no one ever see the real you. Fakeness defiles. Or maybe you get a kick out of reading the latest story of the latest celebrity crash and burn. Delight in the suffering of another defiles. Maybe you're titillated by violence and consume it constantly. The desensitization to the pain and the suffering of others defiles. Perhaps you're careful with your appearance always, but inside you're riddled with self-doubt and self-disgust. Insecurity and self-hatred defiles. Perhaps there's nothing wrong with you except all the people in your life who disappoint you. Pride defiles. I don't know what this looks like for you or if this connects at all. I'm still figuring it out for myself and I've had longer for God to be working with me on this than you have. But I think what defiles the heart is anything that puts a barrier between you and God and you and other people. And the only way to remove that barrier is to open your heart and let God cleanse and heal you. And that's what Jesus came to do, to restore us to right relationship. It's ritual purity, if you will, not through outward acts, but through an actual indwelling of God's spirit that makes us whole and holy. The Spirit of God, who was in Jesus, who is now in us, grows the love in our hearts and changes us from the inside. God doesn't kick us out of the community because we are broken or defiled, but draws us closer, as close as our own hearts. These are some of the antonyms of defile. Elevate honor, clean, assist, purify, sanctify, esteem, help, cure, protect, please, respect, and heal. God working in our hearts through the Spirit gives us the antonym for what defiles us. I don't know what that might be for you, but I invite you to listen and to find out. We're going to take the next maybe eight to 10 minutes thinking and praying about this in silence. You may stay in your seat or you may come and go from the altar. That's where I'm gonna be on my knees, facing the cross. Listen for the quiet presence in your heart that sees you and knows you just as you are. Listen for the urgings of the spirit that desires to cleanse and heal you and elevate you to greater wholeness and love. Now when you listen, there may be nothing. If so, notice that and how that feels. I believe it is good prayer to acknowledge doubt, emptiness, confusion, despair. You can write about it. There's a space today in your bulletin. There are little pencils on the back of the pew. If your mind wanders and you find yourself thinking about lunch or what you're gonna do when you finally get to leave today, bring it back. You can uh, use the breath to center yourself or you can use this mantra God be in my heart God be in my heart God be in my heart and let it lead you into deeper prayer 
After a period of silent prayer, I'll lead us and gather all of these prayers into communal prayer, and we'll end together in the Lord's Prayer. Open your heart and let God change you.